movie will create a coupled thermal structural flow multiphysics simulation of water going through a duct with an obstruction. We'll begin creating our simulation files in the coupled thermal structural flow environment and we'll select large displacements for our structural simulation. And here we can also select additional results types that we'd like to, uh, to visualize. Now our first solution step has to have an end time of zero seconds. Then we can take that and clone it, that solution step or subcase, clone it and then edit it to give <clears throat> our second um, end time uh, where we'd like to end our simulation. We can put in a number of increments for the structural and thermal flow control. And now we'll create our fluid volume. We'll use the delete face, boss or pocket faces, and then all but selected to generate our fluid volume. Then we'll move that to an empty layer to help with visualizing our next step, which is to split off the obstruction to the flow. So we'll get another associative copy of it, split that body, and then move our obstruction to uh, another layer. Here we'll select 22. And we'll just show those two layers, 11 with the fluid volume and 22 with the structure. And then since we selected no bodies when we initially created our FEM, we'll go ahead and edit bodies to use and select our fluid volume and structural volume. All right, we'll begin creating a mesh on the fluid volume. Here we'll use fluid linear tetrahedrons for that mesh. And we'll select an element size of 1.3. Now, anticipating that we're going to have a finer structural mesh size, uh, what we'll do is we'll refine the fluid mesh on the face that will be in common with the structural body uh, to be the same mesh size. Even though we don't have uh, the requirement of a congruent mesh, uh, the mapping uh, will be better if we have similar mesh sizes between the fluid and the structure. All right, so we've applied a fluid property to the mesh. Next, we'll create a structural mesh on the structural body of the half inch size that we had determined uh, that we'd put on for our mesh control earlier. And here we don't have to use the same type of mesh as well. I'll use bricks for um, the, the structural mesh and we'll give it a material of steel. All right, next we'll define our flow surface. And let's turn on our fluid volume because we need to not only select the structural faces but also the fluid faces for our boundary flow surface. And this is how we specify the fluid structure interaction. And we're going to select uh, five faces from the structure, five faces from the fluid, so you can see a total of ten, and we'll say that the fluid structure interactions are coupled. All right, next we'll specify our flow boundary conditions. We'll give it an inlet flow with a field that will be uh, time dependent. 
and at time 0 we'll have a velocity of 0 at time 10 the end of our second subcase we'll have a velocity of 6,000 inches per second all right and then the other side we'll put an opening We'll put a structural constraint on the structural body to constrain it at the bottom. And then we'll put a thermal boundary condition also on the model. Put a heat load of 11,000 watts. All right, at this point, we've completely specified the model. Go ahead and solve it. And I'll pause the movie while it's solving, but here you can see uh, once it's done, the total elapsed time is 48 seconds to run through those 10 steps. All right, and you can see we have not only structural results, which include things like displacement and stress on the structural portion of the model, but also thermal and flow results. And those thermal and flow results will include some structural results as far as uh, displacement is concerned. Um, so here we can see the displacement of the structure that was passed to the thermal solver, and it's, it's echoing those results. And we'll deform that with the structural result. So here you can see at time 10 seconds, the displacement of the structure. The, uh, the fluid nodes are not required, so I'll turn those off in my post view. And then we'll overlay velocity, the fluid velocity, and we'll overlay the fluid temperature. So in this way, we can see all three physics uh, overlaid at the same time. Here, I'll go ahead and create a uh, cut view of just those last two overlays and we'll turn off the structural uh, meshes for those results and then for those two overlays we'll specify a deformation that will be uh, the fluid displacement so you can see our fluid mesh is displaced for both both velocity and temperature now, just for the fluid velocity, because we're seeing two contour plots on top of each other, I'll change the fluid velocity to an arrow plot so that now we can see all three physics overlaid on top of each other. And then we can animate all three of those as well across uh, the iterations from one second to ten seconds. And that concludes the demonstration.